Hey, what's up everyone? This is Yoan and I hope you're having a great day so far. In this episode, we're gonna make this cute little project. So this is a simple bifold wallet. Um, it is quite minimalist, however, it's very functional. This wallet comes with six card packets, a little zipper pocket to put some coins inside and four compartments where you can put your cash, cell phone, checkbook, or passport. The measurements of this wallet is approximately seven and three quarter inch wide by four inches tall when it's folded like this. And this wallet also comes with a handy little wristlet strap. For the fabric, I used two fat quarters, one for the exterior and one for the interior, and I actually make the most out of the fat quarters. Alternatively, you can also use two quarter of a yard of fabric, so you will have plenty. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. For this project, you will need one fabric for the exterior and one coordinating fabric mainly for the interior and the pockets. Cut one fabric for the exterior and one fabric for the lining. Then you will need to prepare two inner facings, one for the exterior and one for the lining. For the exterior, you will need mid-weight inner facing. I'm using the decor bond here. I like the decor bond because it is quite firm, but it doesn't give that bulky appearance. So I think it's just great for this project. Alternatively, you can also use deco veil, or if you don't have either one in your stash, I think a fusible fleece will work just fine. For the interior, you will need a lightweight inner facing. I'm using my fusible woven inner facing here. And you want to cut both of your inner facing half an inch smaller all around. Now I'm going to go ahead and fuse my inner facing. So I'm going to start with my exterior piece here. So I'm going to lay my exterior wrong side up and then lay the inner facing glue side down or the shiny side down. Making sure to center the position of the inner facing. And then I'm going to go ahead and fuse this in place according to the manufacturer's instruction. Alright, so here I've already fused both of my exterior and interior with the inner facing and they are pretty much ready to go. Now we're going to work on the card pocket. So prepare a rectangle piece according to the measurements and you want to interface this with a fusible woven inner facing. And of course you want to cut the inner facing half an inch smaller all around. Next we're going to draw the pleat lines. Use your fabric marker and draw the pleat lines as shown on the screen right now. So the numbers that you are seeing right now indicate the distance from one line to another. Now we want to start folding from the two and a half inch line. So I'm using my little plastic ruler to help me out a little bit. So I'm going to align my plastic ruler with the two and a half inch line and then fold my fabric towards the wrong side. Finger press just to make the initial crease and then press. Next, we're gonna fold the second line or the one and three quarter line. So this one is easy. All you need to do is just fold this towards your right without shifting the previous fold and then press. Now we're gonna fold the next line or the two and a half inch line. So just like the first line, I'm gonna use my ruler to help me create the initial crease and press. Then we're gonna fold the next line. This time I'm going to fold this towards the right, just like that, and then press. And then I'm going to fold the next two and a half inch line towards the wrong side with the help of my ruler. And then press. Alright, now I'm going to flip this back to the wrong side and find the last line. And then I'm going to fold this line towards the right, just like so. And then press. Alright, so this is how your card slot should look like right now. Now to make this really nice and crisp, we're gonna give this one more good pressing. And then go ahead and top stitch along the fold lines of the pleats. So you wanna top stitch with about 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Thank you. 
draw a straight line right on the center so I'm using my ruler here and measure four quarter of an inch from the edge and then I draw the straight line with my disappearing fabric marker from the very first fold line down to the bottom now go ahead and sew along the line so I'm going to start from the top where the first fold line is so I'm going to position my needle right on the top stitch line I'm not going to back stitch here, I'm just going to go and sew. Alright, now I'm going to flip this to the wrong side and then find the bobbin thread from the very first stitch. And I'm going to pull this thread and then grab the thread from the right side. And then I'm going to make a knot. Make it nice and tight there. So this is a great method that you can do if you want to avoid the backstitch line at certain part of the project. Alright, so you want to double check again and make sure that your pocket piece is now measuring four and a quarter inch tall. Now take the card pocket lining piece and then lay them right side together and then go ahead and stitch along the top edge with quarter inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then fold them wrong side together just like that and then press. Top stitch along the top edges and then stitch along the sides and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Next, we're going to work on pocket one. So I've cut two rectangles from the main fabric and fuse one of them with the fusible woven interfacing. Now on this pocket, we're going to attach a little strap anchor so you can hook your wristlet strap. So for this, you're going to need a half an inch of deering and a little ribbon scrap, like about one inch long. And of course, the width of the ribbon should be about half an inch wide. So go ahead and insert the ribbon through the hole of the D-ring. And then position the ribbon on the top left of the outer part of the pocket, about three quarter of an inch away from the side edges. Now I'm going to secure this with a sewing clip and then stitch with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance. So I'm using my zipper foot here for easier move since the D-ring is a little close to the edge and it might get in the way with the presser foot. Now lay the pocket pieces right side together, pin them in place and then go ahead and sew along the top edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. And I'm still using my zipper foot. Press the seams open, fold along the seams wrong side together and then press and then go ahead and top stitch. Now take your interior piece lay it out right side up and then take the pocket one piece and lay it out right side up. And of course you want to align the bottom and the side edges with the interior piece. And then take the card pocket piece and lay that on top of the pocket one, just like so. So the card pocket should be sitting a quarter of an inch lower than the pocket one. Now you can go ahead and secure them in place with sewing clips. And then go ahead and stitch along the sides and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. Alright, so one side of the wallet is pretty much done. So you've got six card pockets and two compartments on this side. Now we're going to work on the zipper pocket. So I've got two pieces here. So this smaller piece is going to be the exterior. And this larger piece is going to be the interior or the actual pocket. And we're going to fuse both of them with the fusible woven interfacing. 
cut your interfacing half an inch smaller all around for the smaller piece for the larger piece you're going to interface it halfway only so only the top half you don't really need to interface the bottom draw the zipper template on the wrong side of your inner pocket piece or the larger piece an inch down from the top and the measurements should be six inch by half an inch and of course you want to center the position draw a straight line right on the center and then draw diagonal lines on the corner forming little triangles there about half an inch diagonal lines now lay the outer pocket piece right side up and then you're going to lay the inner pocket piece right side down about 3 8 of an inch away from the top and of course you want to center the position secure them in place with a couple of pins and then go ahead and sew along the perimeter of the zipper template and then you want to cut the center line and the little corner triangles now as you get to the corner just be careful not to cut through the stitches now turn this piece to the wrong side finger press along the seams and then you can go ahead and give this a good pressing so you should end up with something like this now prepare your zipper obviously your zipper should be at least six inches long my zipper was a little too long so i had to trim this off beforehand as usual i'm going to use my basting tape to base my zipper so i'm going to cut two pieces six inches long and then stick them on the edges of the zipper tape and then peel the top layer off now position the zipper template on the zipper you may need to adjust the position of the zipper teeth just to make sure it is nice and centered and now go ahead and press the edges with your finger so the basting tape will stick to the fabric then go ahead and sew all around the template i'm sewing with my walking foot here but you can also use zipper foot Alright, once you've done sewing, go ahead and trim off any excess zipper tape and then fold this piece in half just like that, meeting the top and the bottom edges. Pop a couple of pins to secure them in place and then go ahead and stitch along the side and the top edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. Now take the zipper pocket lining, I cut one from my main fabric here since I don't have any more left from my interior fabric. So you want to lay them right side together, pin the top edges and then go ahead and sew with quarter inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then fold along the seams, wrong side together and then press, then top stitch along the top edges. Next, we're going to work on the pocket 2. So we're going to work on this exactly the same way as we did pocket 1 minus the strap anchor. So I'm going to go ahead and lay them right side together and then stitch the top edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then go ahead and top stitch. Now we're gonna assemble the opposite side of the wallet. So take the pocket two and then lay that right side up, aligning the side and the bottom edges. And then take the zipper pocket and lay that on top of the pocket two, just like so. And then secure everything with some sewing clips. And once you've done that, go ahead and stitch along the sides and the bottom with quarter inch of seam allowance. All 
right, so now you've got a zipper pocket and two compartments. So our wallet interior is pretty much done at this point. Now we're gonna work on the button flap. So here I've already cut two rectangles from my main fabric and you wanna interface one of them with the decor bond. So I cut my decor bond quarter of an inch smaller from the top and the sides and 3 8 of an inch smaller at the bottom part. All right, now we're gonna lay them right side together and then stitch along the sides and the top with quarter inch of seam allowance. Then you wanna clip the corners. Be careful not to cut through the stitches. Now we're gonna turn this piece inside out. And I like to use my knitting needle to poke the corners. Now go ahead and give this a good press. And once you've done that, go ahead and top stitch. Position the button flap on the right side of the side of the wallet which you decided to be the back side. And of course you want to position this right on the center. Secure this in place with a sewing clip and then go ahead and stitch along the edges with quarter inch of seam allowance. Next we're going to attach the button closure. So I'm going to use this metal button closure that I purchased from Amazon. So I suggest you buy something that comes in a set with the tools and the direction on how to install the snap. Alternatively, you can also use magnetic snap or you can also do velcro closure. So I'm going to demonstrate how to install these metal snap closures. However, yours may vary depending on the set that you purchase. So I'll always refer to the instructions that come with it. So here I've got my snaps and my tools ready. So this is called the cap and this is the socket and this one is called the stud and this one is the post so the cap and the socket will be installed on the flap while the stud and the post will be installed on the front of the wallet so this is the setter base and this one is the punch tool this is the convex tool and this one is called the concave tool and you will also need a hammer Next, we're going to mark the position of the snap. So you want to measure three quarter of an inch down from the edge of the flap and place a little mark with your fabric marker. Now from the opposite edge of the wallet, you want to measure one and a quarter inch down from the edge and mark the placement of your button. Of course, you want to do it right on the center and ignore my measurements here i measure mine one and three quarter inch down but i think it's just a little too snug now we're gonna make the hole on the flap so i'm gonna lay my flap on the center base and then take the punch tool and then i'm going to position the punch tool right on top of the mark and then go ahead and swing your hammer right on the punch tool Alright, so you can see the hole there. Insert the cap through the hole from the right side of the flap and then place the socket on it, so from the wrong side. Now place the convex tool vertically on the socket and then you're going to strike this with the hammer. So you want to do this until you feel that the snap is nice and tight. If it is still moving, you may want to strike it with the hammer again. Alright, now I'm going to remove my convex tool and you should end up with something like this. Now we're going to work on the other side, so go ahead and make the hole on the mark the same way like before. Now insert the post through the hole from the wrong side. Put the stud over the post, just like that. Place the concave tool vertically on the stud and then pound it lightly with the hammer. Alright, so you want to make sure that everything is nice and snug. To make the wristlet strap, you're going to need to cut a strip of fabric from your main fabric and you will also need a half an inch swivel hook. 
For the tutorial, I'm going to link a separate video since I've done this several times before. So you can go ahead and check that out and follow the exact same directions. And I will have the link on the description box and the comment section down below. Now comes the final assembling. So lay the exterior and the interior piece right side together. So I like to face the card pocket with the flap side or the back side and the zipper pocket with the front side. Secure everything with some sewing clips, leaving about 4 inches of opening at the front to turn this wallet inside out later. And then sew with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now trim off the corners, of course you want to be careful not to cut through the stitches. And then turn the wallet inside out through the opening hole. And then I want to poke the corners with my knitting needle. If you don't have a knitting needle and you've got like chopstick or skewer, you can use them instead. Now head over to your ironing board and then press your wallet inside and outside. Just be mindful with your zipper and the hardwares. Make sure your iron will not run through them. Now fold the row edges from the opening hole towards the inside. Simply following the seam allowance, which is 3 8 of an inch. Secure them in place with some sewing clips. And then top stitch along the edges. So you want to start top stitching from the opening hole. And I recommend to use heavier duty needle. A denim size needle or micro text needle will be good for this. And voila, your wallet is done. And that's all I have for you today guys. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting project. Goodbye!